Hey, what's up, entrepreneurs? Have you ever wanted to launch your own recession-proof business with the freedom to be your own boss and work from home? That's why I created biz5freedom.com to show you how you can join our team and work together in a business and industry that's allowed me to create my dream life, where I can travel where and when I want to with my family. I can take time off during the week to go boating and wakeboarding with my five kids and wife or go snowboarding during the winter and work in a business that's busy in good times and even busier during bad times. Watch my free workshop at biz5freedom.com. That's B-I-Z-F-I freedom.com. B-I-Z-F-I freedom.com. See you at the workshop. What's going on, my friends? Welcome to today's episode of the Seven Figures Club podcast. Again, for all you entrepreneurs, small business owners who are trying to break into the top 5% of businesses that generate seven figures a year in sales and revenue and hopefully some point profits, we've got a special guest for you today, Ann Hill. And Ann has been there and she's done that, guys. She has created her own agency. She's now helping other business owners create agencies that allow them to thrive in their zone of genius. We're going to talk about that today. Business owners who work with Ann are able to provide the highest level of service to their clients, creating a trickle-down effect of happy and healthy CEOs, equaling a happy team, equaling happy customers. So if you'd like to be a happy business owner, and I can tell you there's been many times as a business owner I haven't been happy, then you're going to want to take notes with what Ann is going to be teaching you today. Uh, She is utilizing her 15 years as a physical therapist to help business owners see the end results and build processes to achieve their major goals. After working with Ann, business owners work in the most efficient way to streamline and run their business, saving them time, money, and frustration. She's able to take the big goals that seem overwhelming and break them down to achievable steps. So guys, get your notebook ready because Ann is a wealth of knowledge here to help you make better decisions to grow your business. And welcome to the show. There are over 32 million businesses in the U.S. and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi-seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, early on, we a few minutes ago, we were talking a little bit about your background and you talked about how you had lived in Utah previously and gone to middle school. I'm curious with your background and upbringing, what events uh, maybe led you down a path of entrepreneurship? <laughs> um, well, it's actually kind of funny. I When I grew up, I really went down that whole um, path of high school, college, grad school, job. Very, very and traditional. Looking, and looking for the like corporate job that would have lots of quote unquote stability and that sort of thing. Um, and always thought that that's what I was going to do. In fact, my, like you mentioned, my background is as a physical therapist and many people would ask me, oh, did you want to start your own business? And I, I was like, well, no, no, I don't. Um, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> and at that time, I really didn't want to be. Um, it wasn't until many years later when I had become a rehab manager and gotten very um, involved and well-versed in more of that operation side of business. Um, And after having kids myself that I kind of looked at everything and went, I don't know if I like the idea so much of everything I do being for another business and not necessarily for my own. Um, But I had unfortunately gotten burnout in the healthcare industry. And so I didn't want to look at having a physical therapy um, company or anything like that. So I did leave the healthcare industry, but did decide to become an entrepreneur. And, um, it was eye opening to me. It just, how many opportunities are out there and what people are able to do when they're small business owners. And no question. If you're not working every day towards building your dream, you will build someone else's no question (laughs) about it. So, so wow, that's crazy. You were in the healthcare industry, boy, you spent a lot of time, effort, money, invested everything into school to learn to be an expert in that industry. So what, when you left that industry, what industry or profession did you go into? So when I first started my business, I started off at what I classified as just a general VA. Um, And I basically Mm. came into the online space figuring there's people that need help. 
I don't exactly know what I'm doing yet, but let's just go in and see what people need help with. And so I did a lot of, a lot of research on my own on, um, and there's a ton that you can Google and YouTube and all of that sort of stuff. It very much became my friend, um, looking up just different ways to do the things that business owners needed. But I kept finding myself going back into this space of, okay, well, what's your process with this? And and how can we simplify this? And how can we streamline Mm -hmm. this? And then I went through um, a director of operations certification program and did a little bit more um, training and certifications just in that online operations space. And I I realized through all of it, it was, um, again, an eye-opening kind of epiphany to me that the things that I learned and liked as a rehab manager in a corporation very much translated to the areas of operations that I really enjoyed helping business owners and what I kept kind of in my own mind going back to on processes and systems and figuring out what was going on in businesses. And then the therapy side really came into play because it was like that diagnostic assessment um, of, you know, what's going on. And instead of it being what's going on functionally and physically with the body, it was what's going on functionally with the business. Um, and how, how is the business working? So the way that my brain operated and the way that I was thinking was very similar still. Um, but I didn't realize it right off the bat when I first started. <laughs> so now you, you let's unpack something really important, guys. Whatever you're doing, take a minute here and take a note of this. Notice that when she started her business, she didn't just decide she had the perfect offering and everybody just needed to get that offering. She went into it with trying to find out what does the market want? What are the needs of my potential clients? How important do you think it is for business owners to go into a market and look at it that way in spite of you know how much experience they may think they have in the industry? Oh, yeah, I think that is very important to be doing. Um, and in fact, with anything, any new offers or any new modifications that I make, we're, we're always doing that market research first and, and asking people and talking to, to business owners on what it is that they feel like their issues are and what it is that they are seeing when they're doing, you know, these things in their business, whether that's, um, you know, hiring on new team members or whether that's, you know, like I was mentioning, I, or like you mentioned, I do focus on agencies. So, you know, there is an element of, of an agency of turning your team members client facing and, you know, what are the problems and challenges that go along with that? And then looking at those areas and saying, okay, well, with my skill set and my expertise, do I have a way that I can help them be successful in doing this? Absolutely. So sometimes as business owner, we get stuck and we can't see as clearly as we'd like to the whole perspective of what's going on with our business. What are some of the strategies that you can use to identify what is and what is not working you know, with your business? If you have a team, I definitely recommend talking to your team members because they will be very quick, especially if they're the ones doing a lot of the implementation. They'll be very quick to tell you, oh my gosh, I hate it when this happens and it happens all the time. Or if you don't have a team, um, then it's really looking at, okay, what am I putting off all the time? What am I procrastinating on? Is there a reason I'm not wanting to do this? Um, And then also just in general, you know, if you are measuring metrics or key performance indicators, then you could definitely see in the data what is working and what is not working in your business. If you're not measuring anything, I would highly suggest looking at a few different numbers to see what's working and what's not working. So where should you start? Like it's people here all the time, KPIs, you know, key performance indicators that really give you a sense of where your business is at. And if you're tracking those the right way, you know, instead of finding out three months later, you've got a real big problem you can find out very quickly. <laughs> but what are some uh, some ways to identify some key performance indicators? I feel like there's a lot of similarities, you know, across different businesses. But what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So if you are not tracking anything yet, I can tell you a few right off the bat that definitely would be yes. handy. One in particular would just be looking at top line revenue um, and seeing what it is that you are bringing in in your business um, and where where those numbers are. Are they where you you want them to be? Are they not where you want them to be yet? Um, Are you on track for the progression that you want to see in your business? Um, Another one would be looking at sales and looking at sales conversions of, of, are we bringing in business still? Um, Another one would be specifically looking at profit margins. So how much does it cost in your business versus in what you're spending to run your business versus how much you're bringing in Um, and seeing what those profit margins are. Um, Because no matter how many sales I bring in the door, if I'm spending just as much 
that's not a good thing. <laughs> so <laughs> not at all. That's spinning your wheels, working very hard to not make any money. Yeah. And then on the operational side of things, one um one way to th- or one number, I guess, metric that you can really look at is um, how long does it take you to complete a pro- if you're doing projects, you can look at the entire project. Um, if you're not doing projects and you're in in a business on a service um, basis that's a little bit more on that ongoing recurring way, then you might want to look at, um, you know, the different tasks that you have to do. How long does it take me to do these things? And am I being, um, basically, am I being um, efficient in how I'm doing things in my business? Absolutely. So you guys, you start by looking at the top line. Of course, you look at the bottom line and there's a lot of different ways to do that. But I feel like there's, there's a gap sometimes in how that's trackable What are some of the ways that you recommend business owner actually track the top and bottom line, you know, numbers uh, effectively and efficiently? Um, If you don't have anything in place, the easiest thing to do is just start with a a blank spreadsheet and put the months and put the um, the numbers on that spreadsheet and and then just keep track monthly on where things are. If you have a lot of transactions, especially looking at revenue, if there's a lot of trans- transactions that are happening, then it may make sense to be in more of a weekly basis for when you're pulling those numbers. Um, but if it's not a significant or a substantial amount of transactions that are happening, then typically a monthly basis will still be a, a beneficial number for you and still give you the data that you need to look at to know what's going on. Um, the other thing is that in order for you to track that, if you're anything like me, I have to have that in my calendar as a reminder of something for yes. me to be doing on a regular basis. Not going to happen without it. So if, if it is, especially if it's something that every, you know, every Friday you're pulling numbers, then say maybe every Friday at 1 p.m. you put that in your calendar that that's what you're going to do at that time or potentially every at the, the last Friday of the month or something like that. But make sure that you are consistently putting something in your calendar so that you do actually track it. Well said. So at some points, you know, we, we've made some progress with our business and it feels like we kind of hit a ceiling and we kind of flatline and month after month, we're showing similar numbers. You might even fast forward six months and your sales haven't improved. You know, your top line revenue is about the same. Your bottom line is about the same. What does that say about, uh, about a business in your, in your experience? Um, a lot of times that's where, where people feel like they've, they've just gotten stuck. They don't know what they need to do, but they knew they know something needs to be done. Um, And I am a a big proponent. I don't know if you have have read this book before or not, but I'm a big proponent of um, Mike Michalowicz's fix this next. Um, And Mm. he really dives into with that book. He dives into a lot of the um, information about what he classifies as like a business hierarchy of needs. Um, and he he really says that this this is a revolving door um, that you're going to constantly ass- be re- reviewing and reevaluating what areas in your business need to have the most attention. But his big focus with that book um, really talks about what is the the thing to fix that's going to have the biggest ripple effect. Um, so it's not just necessarily putting out the next fire, but it's what is that thing that needs to be touched and addressed next to help in the big picture and maybe relieve multiple issues and not just the one issue that you're fixing with that. Um, and in that hierarchy of needs, what he really goes through is the sales, the profit and the, or what he classifies as order, but like, it's that you're essentially the operational side, the, the, um, the, the operation, the processes, that sort of stuff in the business. So, um, I am a big proponent of really exactly what he talks about in that. Um, and so going through and really looking at, okay, foundationally, do we have sales coming in the door? If we don't have sales coming in the door, then that maybe that's where we need to start fixing first. If we have the sales coming in the door, where are our profits? And do we need to potentially lean down some of the things in our business to help us be more profitable? Um, and if everything is looking good there, then you go up to that that order level. But But it's ultimately... When, especially when you're feeling stuck or especially when you're feeling like there's something going on and I don't know what to do next, but something needs to be done, um, doing that assessment and kind of constantly redoing and reviewing the assessment and figuring out of those different levels, where are we at? Um, that's, that's really what I find is ex- exceptionally helpful with businesses and business owners that I work with. 
well, well said. So there's a hierarchy. And, and this is when I think back to another book that I was uh, I was reading where it talks about when, you know, Navy SEALs are out in a really complicated mission, you prioritize and execute. And it sounds kind of that's what Fix This Next is saying. You, you have this hierarchy of importance, but what's really going to move the needle in your business? What's going to help you grow and start to increase sales and get back on a track of growth? Because I feel like if you're not growing in your business and you're flatlining, Eventually, that's going to end very badly for you. If I'm not growing, I feel very, I seriously get depressed. So it's very important to keep on growing. So, so that said, you know, in order to make those growth and, and not drive yourself insane, a lot of listeners on here are operators. They're really good at getting their client a result. But what they're not good at is delegating, is building out that team. And you're very good at helping business owners understand this. So what are some of the keys to learning to build out a team, to delegate properly and, and not drive yourself insane because someone doesn't do it exactly as good as you, you know, operate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That I would say is one of the biggest struggles that, um, that I, the business owners have when they are growing a team. And that's also another area where I see people get stuck as they start to grow a team and then they realize that they don't have the structure there and the foundational basis um, to, to really allow them to delegate effectively to their team yes. members. So then they start to scale back down because they're like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I don't want to be this big, huge team anymore because it didn't work for me. But um, a lot of times it's just looking at some of the different structures and some of the different um, tools that you can put in place to help you delegate effectively to your team members. Um, one in particular that I like to do um, is if you haven't done it before, it's a time study. It's basically just yeah. seeing how are you spending the time in your day? What are you doing, um, you as the business owner? And what on that list are things that you can start to delegate to others? If you already know what you plan on delegating to other people, um, then there's a few different things that need to be put in place. Number one, um, you need to be open, like mindset wise. You need to be of the right mindset that and be open to the fact that other people can do the job for you and, and be willing to, to pass that off. Um, if you're not open to that idea of somebody else coming in and getting their hands in it a little bit, then it's, I can tell you right off the bat, it's not going to be successful. Um, but as long as you're open to the idea of somebody else coming in and helping support you in your business, um, then there, there's a chance of it going well. Um, and so that would be the first part is just truly being open to it. Um, the second part is having some systems in place, um, like how to communicate, when to communicate, um, what things need to be done, where they can go to for um, information on what's going on in your business. Um, and these things don't need to be completely already worked out before you bring on someone. You can always have that person help you create some of these things. Um, essentially, it's like your operating procedures um, that I'm talking about here, but it's just kind of giving some check, checks and balances, some guidelines, some information to that, that person to know what to expect as you bring them onto your team. And then also for you to take the, um, the, I guess the thoughts and sometimes theories of how you think things should operate and actually put it down in a process and on paper. Um, so that's another part of it. And then. So, so what, what you're talking about there is kind of SOPs, if you will, standard operating yeah. procedures. And I feel like, you know, business owners have heard of these, but they're not really sure how to create those. What do you find is a good process you know, to create a, an SOP. And of course, we're going to talk about in a minute how, you know, if you can't figure all this out and you don't have the time, you probably want to work with Anne and her <laughs> team to help you out with that. But, but what are some keys to creating a good SOP? I really find, especially if you don't have anything in place yet, is think more of an overarching framework of how do I do this? Don't necessarily yes. worry about the nitty gritty with it, but just think, okay, if somebody is um, coming into my business and I need them... It, it, when you're first starting to put this together, um, maybe you're saying I need them to um, help me with my bookkeeping. And so you're going to think about, okay, what do they need to have access to, first of all? And then second of all, you're going to go, okay, well, they're going to need to um, do the monthly transactions. They're going to need to be able to pull a report from my account. They're going to need to, and kind of just think of what are the different things that they need to be able to do. Don't necessarily worry about the order of it right off the bat. Just kind of put down what it is that they need to be able to do. Um, and then afterwards, you can kind of look back at it and go, okay, now maybe this needs to be in a different order. And you can kind of readjust and change the order with it. 
Um, and this can just be something that you jot down, like on a Google doc, it doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be in a, um, in an expensive tool. It can truly just be in a document. Um, what I find though, is if you stay initially stay a little bit more general and then complement that with a video of you doing it the next time you're doing that in your business, whether that's, you know, the bookkeeping side or whether that's invoicing a client or, you know, whatever it might be, but make a video to kind of complement those notes that you've put together. Um, and then the person taking on the job can actually help with some of the fine tuned details that go with it. Mm -hmm. Um, because the more they can actually document what's going on and how they're doing the process, um, the more it's going to number one, be accurate. And number two, going to reiterate and reinforce that they know what it is that they need to be doing. You know, and one of the nice surprises that happens when you actually do build this out and you bring someone on in your business, sometimes you actually figure out that some of the people you bring in are actually better at doing some of the things than you are. And that is such a great thing to find out. And then you can actually let go and start to focus on building the business instead of always working in the business. And that's a huge breakthrough. And, you know, some of the next things we talk about, okay, we've got these procedures, we've got a framework, and then there are actual like processes and workflows Uh, A lot of this, I think, comes back to technology. What are some of the things that you should start to automate in your business in terms of technology? Yeah, once you really narrow down and and nail what your process is, that's when when you can start to look at taking some of the manual pieces out and starting to automate some of it. Um, Onboarding processes with clients um, definitely should be something that's automated um, once you know what your process is. Another part of it um, is on the marketing side of things, you know, getting um, getting these email sequences, getting in, when people sign up for if you have some sort of an opt in or something like that, getting that to then go into an email sequence. Yes. Um, there's multiple ways that you can utilize third party tools like Zapier um, to make different get, platforms. Get those off. zaps going. Yeah. <laughs> Um, And then another thing that I really like to do, especially on that onboarding process, is take the onboarding and have that automatically create some things in a project management tool for me so that I have a checklist Mm. after somebody has signed a contract as to what needs to be done. Beautiful, beautiful. And and then so as you kind of bring all this full circle, you're making progress in your business. Maybe, you know, we're going to talk in a minute about what it looks like to work with Hilltop Operations and consulting. But how can you actually grow your business in a way that you still have some sort of balance with your personal life, too? A lot of us, you know, not everybody out there has five kids like I do, but people (laughs) might have some children, family, a significant other. And maybe they have some hobbies. Uh, they want to be able to take care of their health. And sometimes as a business owner, it's all encompassing. You know, what, is it, what does it look like to be able to live that type of life as a business owner? Have it all, if you will. Yeah. So there's a few different things that I definitely emphasize with people and, and with clients that I work with is um, number one, be very clear on what your boundaries are. You know, if you very much, if one of your big goals is to always be able to pick up your kids from school or to always be unplugged from five o'clock on in the evening, um, you know, make those things known, not only to your team members, but also to your clients um, and and give them a good understanding. It's really setting, communicating your expectations and communicating your boundaries with both clients and with team members is really going to help. Me personally, one of my big things is that I um, pick up my kids from school. And after I pick them up from school, I know that there's going to be about a four hour time frame when I'm just not going to be available, it's just how it is. And, and I want, I do communicate that with my clients, but then I also want them to know that, Hey, I'm not ignoring you. Um, and I'm not just avoiding you or anything like that. It's I, I choose to take basically be done by about three o'clock, but then usually at about eight or so, I'll just kind of check back in on email and see if there's anything that's a little more pertinent that I need to follow up with. Um, typically there's not, but you know, it's just that extra check at the end of the day. And that's just what my process is. Um, just based on where I've set some boundaries, some people may not want to do that extra check at the end of the day. And that's, that's up to the business. That's the joy of being the business owner. You get to have that freedom to, to decide. The buck stops things. with you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very important that you, you determine what those boundaries are and essentially what those non-negotiables are and then communicating it with people. Um, when you are at the stages of growing, um, I think that having a team is really another element of being able to 
um, to have it all, as you said, where when you have team members there, you can tell them. And when you're thinking about how you're building everything out, your question needs to constantly be coming back to how does this get done without me being the one doing it? Um, and the more you can think through the processes in that way, the more you're going to start to have team members helping more and you doing less in the business and you having a little bit more of that luxury and that freedom. That's so true. I remember back in April of 2019, you know, the first year of building our business and we got really busy and there was just a handful of us and I was working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. Oh, wow. And that was exhausting. And I remember how good it felt when I was able to bring in a couple people to take over that extra workload. And it really takes a load off your shoulders. And yes, business owners, your profit margins are going to go down a little bit by doing that. But overall, you can grow more, you'll make more money, you'll have a better life. Everything will get better when you do. Well, and I know a lot of people are listening and they're thinking, wow, it'd just be great if I could implement and learn specifically how to build these SOP systems and processes. How can Ann and you know the, the team at Hilltop Operations help me do that? Yes. Yeah, so definitely my website's the easiest way to connect. It's hilltopoperations.com. Um, feel free to book a call and you know chat. I'm always open to, to talking with people. And, and um, there are complimentary strategy sessions that I do offer for, for people. And then also on that website, though, there is a, a free tool, a free resource for hiring. So, you know, if people are at a stage where they're thinking about hiring, this this um, really goes through some of the, the process that goes on the back end of hiring people, some questions for interviewing them, some things to make sure you have in place, all of that fun stuff. Guys, that's hilltopoperations.com. Amazingly, you can actually book a free consult with Anne right there on the website. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you can download her free hiring playbook and uh, sign up and get access to that information. I love it. It has a little picture of a football field on there because yeah. <laughs> you got to have a good playbook if you want to win your football game. <laughs> it's the same thing in business. If you don't have a good playbook, it's going to be very difficult. And the good thing is you don't have to create everything. You can learn from someone who already knows how to create systems, processes, SOPs, build cultures and manage a team so you can actually live the life, have it all that you want, that you envisioned when you started your business. And then you, you know, business got in the way and got busy and it got difficult, but that's how you can actually get there. But if you don't ever take the time, you're not going to get there. So guys, this is not a passive podcast. You must take action. Again, that's hilltopoperations.com. Take action and, you know, consult with someone who can help take that load off your shoulders so you can build your business. Well, Anne, we really appreciate you being a guest on the podcast today. The final word is yours in terms of the actions that you know our listeners should be taking if they want to create the business that they really want. Yeah. So I would definitely say it's building a team, it's getting the support in your business, and then um, you know getting that solid foundational structure in your business so that you're ready to grow as the business keeps coming in. So... Amen. Well, well said again, guys, that's hilltopoperations.com. Uh, check it out. Learn about systems processes. It really feels so good when you actually have a team. And again, your team may surprise you over time that they'll actually do things better than you can. But hey, even if they do it 70 to 80% as good as you think you would do, that allows you to actually build a business instead of a job. Uh, you know, a job that you work 80 hours a week and never actually, you know, make any progress with. So take action and thank you for being a guest. Thank you so much for having me. Are you looking for more seven figure secrets, content, or even how you can launch your own recession proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven F I G U R E S dot com where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession proof. Thank you for listening. And if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five star and invite others to join the club. When you're launching a new business, there are so many things you don't know about incorporating taxes, online presence, business and social media, key performance indicators, even how to build corporate credit scores. That's why we took some of our most successful strategies and poured them into the Seven Figures Accelerator. It's an entrepreneurial education platform that's helped empower hundreds of new entrepreneurs with the tools they need to succeed and grow to seven figures. So check out sevenfiguresaccelerator.com to watch the free workshop. Again, that's sevenfiguresaccelerator.com.